All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing the horror novel Death Instinct by Ben Lee Little. This book came out in 1992. Um... Let's talk about the cover first, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. It's kind of got a cool little cover, like a muscle car with the city town in the background or whatever. It's all right. It's okay. It's all right. I've got my entire Bentley Little collection. We'll pan through the library here. My entire Bentley Little collection is down here on this shelf there, if you can see. Anyway, so we're rereading all of the Bentley Little novels and leaving a review on a channel. For each one were to death instinct like i said this is an older book of over 30 years old came out in 92. um now there's a prologue the prologue is a little weird a little creepy a little oh my god i was uncomfortable for the characters in this prologue um it starts out with kathy she's in the seventh grade and she's being it's just a little scene where she's being tormented by her brother and his friends in a very creepy way which I shall not explain, because it would get me in a lot of trouble. If I even just explain it, I'll probably have the cops knocking on my door. I'll let you read it. In fact, opening up with such a weird, disturbing scene, I was like, okay, we're back into some real horror novel stuff here. Because the horror novels I chose to read for the month of, what is this, September? There were four other horror novels I read. They were kind of tepid. They're kind of PG rated. They weren't that scary. They were another weird, creepy stuff. This starts off with right out of the right out of the starting gate. You are being weirded out in a way you don't want to be weirded out. But anyway, young Kathy, that's not her only problem. Back years ago, when she was six years old, the next door neighbor killed himself. But he murdered his wife before he killed himself. It was a murder suicide. So that house, uh, the neighbor's house has been haunted forever. And so that's kind of the prologue. It's kind of the first little bits of information we get about this story. And then we jump into some scenes with some police officers who are investigating a scene of, um, oh, beyond that. Okay, so let's jump ahead. Let's jump ahead a little bit to when Kathy is um, 26 years old. That's when the, mo- the, the story takes place when she's 26 years old. She's got a father who is sickly and dying, and she's taking care of him. And he's a grumpy old man. And he, um, she'll make whatever she makes him for dinner, he hates it and complains about it. She has to drive him to his bingo night and his poker night, and he complains the whole way. So he's just a very cantankerous. So she's, Kathy, when she was six, she had a problem with the suicidal neighbor. When she was in the seventh grade, she had a problem with her brother and his friends creeping her out in weird ways. And now she's 26, and her father's giving her problems. On top of that, like I said, some of the story is told from the perspective of these cops who are investigating murders. Now, the first murder they investigate is some dude has been skinned alive in his own house. And then the next murder they investigate, and this all happens pretty quick early on in the story, um, someone else is found dead in the street with their spine snapped. And then on top of all that, so they think they've got a serial killer in town. Of course, Kathy is aware of that. But then on top of that, finally, somebody is moving into the house next door, the haunted house next door where the suicide took place. Someone's moving into it. And the screams are starting up again in that house with the new neighbors. And Kathy's like, OMG. You know what I'm saying? But not only that, but Kathy at the same time is kind of holding on to her own secret life, her own secrets. Um, and uh, that's kind of the gist of the story. We just deal with those, all of those kind of plot threads kind of converging into a very bloody, gruesome mess at the end, which I was happy about because, like I said, the other books that I read that were supposed horror novels this month, they weren't really that horrific. I'll read the back of this. And I suck at reading out loud, folks. Um... It seems something strange. God, I already fucked it up. I'll edit that out. It seems so strange 
that someone is living in the house across the street again. Kathy was only six when the man who lived there killed his wife and himself. Kathy heard their screams. She saw the blood and the bodies. Now, almost 20 years later, the house is no longer vacant. Someone new has moved in, and something dreadful is starting to happen in the neighborhood. The killer is on the loose, and the screams are starting again. Whatever's going on inside, whatever's going on in the city and inside that house is a secret. No one is supposed to know. I told you I can't read. I should just stop reading the jacket copy because it's the worst thing about my book reviews. Because I can't read out loud without just stumbling over the words. Death Instinct by Bentley Little. Let's give this a solid 8.5 out of 10.